Ever since Israeli victory during the wars of 1948 and 1956, the Arab coalition led by Egypt, Syria, and Jordan were eager to change the situation in the region by defeating Israel. Both sides understood that the conflict was far from over and were preparing for the next stage of confrontation, international interference, and the inability of the sides to find a settlement made one of the most iconic conflicts of the modern era, the Six-Day War inevitable. On May 13, 1967, the Soviet Union falsely informed Egypt about the concentration of 11-13 brigades of the Israeli Defense Forces with an intent to strike Syria. In response, Egypt started concentrating forces along the border with Israel and Sinai and on May 16 demanding the UN peacekeeping forces to leave the peninsula. At the same time, Israel refused the request of the UN on the deployment of the UNF on their side of the border either. In the next few days, Egypt, Israel, Jordan, and Sudan started mobilization of their forces. Iraq sent expeditionary forces to Jordan. Saudi Arabia expressed its willingness to participate in military actions. But the turning point, which made the full-scale confrontation inevitable, was the decision of Egypt to block Israeli ships from entering the Straits of Turn on May 22-23. On June 1, Israel established a national unity government, which on June 4 decided to go to war. The Arab coalition of Egypt, Jordan, and Syria had an advantage over Israel and deployed troops with 240,000 against 100,000 in tanks with 2,504 against 800 and aircraft with 957 against 300. Israel planned to strike on June 5 with Operation Focus, which aimed to destroy the Egyptian Air Force. The Israeli media published false reports Make these claiming pieces Israeli of training as realistic as possible and while damaged pilots the tracking were carrying antenna out training of the US. as usual in their Embassy to prevent health. the Americans from finding out about the operation before the strike took place. The Israeli pilots were informed about the start of the operation only five hours in advance. At the same time, the Egyptian air defense system was effectively off on June 5. Nearly 200 Israeli aircraft attacked 14 Egyptian airfields and caught them absolutely off guard. 338 Egyptian aircraft were destroyed, 100 pilots were killed within three hours. Jordanian and Syrian Air Force attacked Israel in retaliation at 11 a.m. June 5. The response of the Israeli Air Force was an attack on their airfields, which led to the destruction of all 28 Jordanian, 53 Syrian, and 10 Iraqi planes. Operation Focus was a decisive success. Israel lost only 19 planes. In this operation and guaranteed its total air dominance for the, the rest ground of the war, war was taking place at three fronts. The Sinai Front, the Jordanian Front, the Syrian Front. At the Sinai Front, the Egyptian forces consisted of seven divisions, four armored, two infantry, and one mechanized infantry. Egypt had 100,000 troops and 900-950 tanks in the Sinai, so Israel concentrated three divisions consisting of six armored, one infantry, one mechanized infantry, and three paratrooper brigades for a total of 70,000 men and 700 tanks along this front. Israel's plan was to catch Egyptians off guard by attacking simultaneously with airstrikes and attacking through the northern and central routes in the Sinai Peninsula instead of the central and southern routes used during the Sinai War on 5 June at 7.50 a.m., the northernmost Israeli division, consisting of three brigades and commanded by Major General Israel Tau, started its advance towards Arish through Gaza with an aim to encircle Khan Yunis, while the paratroopers were ordered to take Rafa. Initially, Egyptians offered little resistance, since their intelligence concluded that this was a diversion rather than the main attack. However, soon resistance against the 60th Armored Brigade ramped up. This did not stop the Israeli forces from reaching Khan Yunis railway junction in four hours. Afterward, IDF advanced on the Suez Channel, while the second group turned south and captured Burr, advanced on Sheikh Suwaid, and defeated fierce Egyptian resistance thanks to air domination. The road on Arish was open, and by 8 a.m. of 6 July elements of the 79th Armored Battalion and the 7th Brigade entered the suspiciously quiet city. Suddenly, the Egyptians started firing from the balconies, windows, and there was a heavy battle going on for control in the city and the IDF was only able to take full control of the city after reinforcements were sent. The northernmost division is then split into two parts. One of them the continued. advance on the Suez Channel, while the second group turned south and captured Burr, Lafin, and Jabal Libni. Further south on 6 June, the 14,000 men, 
150 tanks strong Israeli 38th Armored Division under Major General Ariel Sharon was confronted by the Egyptian 2nd Infantry Division under Major General Sadi Najib, consisting of 16,000 troops and 90 tanks. Israel successfully advanced towards Abu Adwila. The paratroopers landed behind Egyptian positions and so enough confusion to weaken the artillery of the Egyptian defense, which opened the way for the IDF to capture Umm Kate. It was followed by a fierce, close tank battle, which ended in an Israeli victory with 40 Egyptian and 19 Israeli tanks, destroyed. The Egyptian forces in Sinai were still largely intact, but their field marshal Abdul Hakim Amr panicked and ordered the retreat of all units. From Sinai after hearing about the fall of Abu Aguila, the this order did not elaborate retreat, on, which only decreased the defensive capabilities of the Egyptian troops. During the following days the IDF continued. Its advance westward and inflicted heavy losses on the Egyptians, despite episodic heavy resistance. By the Egyptians, as in Bin Gafafa, the napalm bombing by the Israeli aviation and uncontrolled retreat weakened the morale of the Egyptian troops. Instead of catching retreating Egyptians, the IDF decided to capture three passes from Sinai to the Egyptian mainland and face the Egyptian troops there. Although IDF was not able to stop all Egyptian troops from crossing, these passes became a killing ground for the Egyptian troops, with 10,000 being killed in one day. Alone, the capture of Sinai was completed by the fall of Sharm el-Sheikh on June 7 and Ra's Souter on June 8. On June 9, UN Security Council achieved armistice between sides. Israel wanted to avoid confrontation the with offers Jordan of and Syria before Jordan defeating were rejected, Egypt, but as the Egyptian President Nasser persuaded King Hussein of Jordan met, Egypt had an advantage against Israel. On the morning of 5 June both sides started the fire, but Israel attempted a last gasp attempt to avoid confrontation. With Jordan bypassing its message of the request of peace through the UN representative Bull, King Hussein countered that it was too late and the Jordanian aviation was already on the way. Jordanian and Iraqi aviation started shelling, Israeli controlled West Jerusalem, which caused 16 military and 20 civilian casualties, with 900 buildings damaged. Israel responded with its air attack with an operation focus, which damaged the military aviation infrastructure of Jordan and secured the Israeli air dominance. East Jerusalem was controlled by Jordan at the time and the Jordanian army took a position. In the UN residency, the government housed a fire on the Israeli sector. The Jerusalem Brigade's Reserve Battalion 161 of Israel took the government house despite heavy losses and forced Jordanians to retreat to Bethlehem. Later on that day Israel encircled Eastern, Jerusalem with the Jerusalem Brigade from the South and the Mechanized Herald Brigade, and 55th Paratroopers Brigade from the North. The fierce battle happened for the Ammunition Hill. Jordanian resistance was so strong that the IDF lost all but two of their attacking officers and achieved the goal only after four hours. 55th Paratroopers Brigade afterward drove eastwards, linked up with Mount Scopus defeated the other Jordanian positions around the American colony. Towards the evening of June 5, the mechanized Herald Brigade succeeded in taking Latron and Ramla. Also, the 163rd Infantry Battalion secured Abu Tor and cut the old city from Bethlehem and Hebron. On June 7, the Israeli Minister of Defense, Moshe Dayan ordered IDF to enter Old City despite reservations and concerns of the Israeli government. The fighting was conducted solely by the paratroopers out of fear of the destruction of holy sites. IDF took control of the Old City after little resistance. Judea, Hebron, Bethlehem, and Nablus were also captured by IDF on June 7. Remnants of the Jordanian army fell back into Jordan. Israel was victorious on this front as well. Syria also believed Nasser about Egypt's early success in the conflict and sent its aviation to attack Galilee. This attack was intercepted by Israeli aviation. A minor ground attack was also attempted by the Syrians in an attempt to capture the water plants at Tel Dan, Dan and Shir Yashav. This was repulsed by IDF as well. Israeli air domination, lack of communication by Syrian units, tanks being too wide for bridges were among the causes of the unsuccessful attack of the Syrians. This caused them to abandon any attempts to make ground offensive on Israel and airstrikes were chosen as a method instead. However, on the evening of June 5, Israel struck Syrian airfields with an operation focus, destroying two-slash-three of the Syrian air force and forcing the rest out of the conflict.
The Israeli leadership was unsure whether to attack Syria or not. On one hand, Syria was using Golan Heights to shell Israel. On the other hand, it would have been an uphill battle against a fortified enemy. But the intelligence about weakened positions, of Syria in general and in Golan Heights in particular, led Dan to order an offensive. On Golan without government authorization, the Israeli offensive started with airstrikes, which severely damaged the defensive infrastructure and morale of the Syrian army. The 8th Armored Brigade, led by Colonel Albert Mandler, advanced into the Golan Heights from Jivat Ha'am. Heavy. Fighting in unfavorable terrain led to numerous casualties on both sides, but with the help of aviation IDF ultimately captured Zora, Kala, and Einfit fortresses. In the central sector, the Israeli 181st Battalion captured the strongholds of Dardara and Tel Hillel after fierce fighting. By the evening of June 9, Israel reached the plateau, which allowed reinforcements to come. Israel had eight brigades by dawn ready for an assault on the second line of defenses. Soon the ceasefire was negotiated around the so-called Purple Line. By 11 June, all military actions stopped. Up to 983 Israelis, 15,000 Egyptians, 700 Jordanians and 2,500 Syrians were killed in action. Israel gained a huge victory. It seized the Gaza Strip, the Sinai Peninsula, the west bank of the Jordan River, including East Jerusalem, and the Golan Heights. About one million Arabs were placed under Israel's direct control in the newly captured territories. The Israeli. The victory came as a result of more efficient military leadership, better preparation of troops and intelligence. But the Six-Day War, by no means, was the last conflict and merely. Six years later, the confrontation escalated into another war. The sponsor of this video, Skillshare, is the premier online learning community with more than 22,000 classes that teach videography, productivity, photography, and more. Modern. Life is fast-paced and demands constant self-improving. So Skillshare is great for people who want to learn a new skill or make their passion a full-time job. If you are planning to create a YouTube channel, Skillshare is the place to start. It has more than 500 courses teacher. After effects ranging from the basics to the courses that can surprise even the advanced users. Premium membership begins around $1.10 a month, but for the first 300 people to sign up with the link in the description, you can get two months of Skillshare for free. These spots typically go quite quickly, so make sure to get in there. We are planning to make more videos on modern warfare, so be sure that you are subscribed to our channel and press the bell button to be notified of our videos. We would like to express our gratitude to our Patreon supporters and YouTube sponsors who make the creation of our videos possible. This is the all-in-one channel, and we will catch you on the next one.